Before you can properly design a reinforced concrete beam, you need to pass through some series of steps. So in this lesson, we are going to take a look at this step. Okay, guys? So in this course, we are going to be designing a beam with unknown cross-section. That is a beam we have no clue about the size, okay? Also, we are also going to be designing a beam with known cross-section. So this is when we have the size of the beam. That is the width of the beam and the depth of the beam. But we don't know the reinforcement steel that we be needed for the beam, okay? So we are going to be designing beam with unknown cross-section and beam with known cross-section. But in this lesson, we are going to take a look at the procedures for design of unknown cross-section. Okay, guys? Now, guys, we are going to be using ACI code, which is American Concrete Institute code. Depending on the country you live in, you are going to use your country code, okay? For example, if you live in India, you are going to use Indian code, okay? If you live in Europe, you are going to use Euro code, okay? But guys, because ACI code is the most commonly used code, okay, we are going to be using American Concrete Institute code, okay? Because this is the most commonly used code when designing BIM, okay, guys? So now let's take a look at the procedures for design of unknown cross session. Now, guys, the first step you want to take is you want to determine factored moment, okay? So you want to compute the factor moment on the beam. Now, guys, we are going to know where does this beam go in the building, okay? So we are going to have an idea of this palm length, okay, guys? So we are going to assume the self weight, that is the beam self weight. Now, guys, we know that self weight can be, can, can be calculated as the unit weight of concrete, which is 150 pounds per cubic foot, then multiplied by the width of the beam, then also multiplied by the height of the beam. But guys, we don't know the width of the beam. We don't know the height of the beam. This is what we are designing for, right? So we are going to be assuming, we are going to assume the height of the beam. We are also going to assume the width of the beam. Now, if you take a look at this table, this table is going to give us the height of the beam, okay? So, if we have a simply supported beam, the height of the beam is going to be the, the span length of the beam, which is L, divided by 16. If we have one end continuous beam, the height of the beam is going to be L over 18.5. And if we have both end continuous, the height of the beam is going to be L over 21. If we have a cantilever beam, the height of the beam is going to be L over 8. But guys, we are going to be taking a look at simply supported beam because this is the most commonly used type of beam, okay? So this is the most commonly type of beam we are going to be designing, okay? So this is the most common type of beam. So we are going to be taking a look at simply supported beam. So the minimum thickness, which is the height, is going to be L over 16, okay? So this is going to be the height of the beam. Guys, this is an assumed height, okay? So we always need to check our assumption, okay, guys? So this is going to be the height of the beam. So we are going to be using L over 16. Don't worry. When we design a beam, you are going to understand this better, okay? So we are going to move to the next step. The next step, we are going to compute required ML, okay? So this is the required moment. Now, guys, how can we do this? We are going to assume a fee, a fee value of 0 0.90. So, guys, this is the factor resistance, okay? So we are going to assume fee to be 0 0.90, okay, guys? So the formula for ML require is going to be MU, okay, MU divided by fee, okay? So this is going to be the step two. Now, step three, we are going to compute row design, okay? So this is a reinforcement ratio. It will tell us how much steel is in the beam and how much concrete is in the beam as well, okay? 
So we are going to compute. We are going to compute row design. Now the formula is 0 0.18 multiply Fc prime, which is the compressive strength of the concrete, divided by Fy. Now if you are given the tensile strain of the steel, which is sigma T, you are going to use this formula to compute the row. Okay. So this is going to be the next step. So step four, we are going to compute required BD square, okay? So this will give us a numerical quantity of roughly how big the beam needs to be, okay, guys? So this is going to be the formula. You are going to use this formula to calculate required BD square, okay, guys? So we are going to move to the next step, which is step five. In step five, we are going to compute required beam dimension, okay? So we are going to assume B over D ratio, okay? So guys, B over D ratio, you want to make this ratio to be between 1.5 to 2.5, okay? So you want to assume a B over D ratio from 1.5 to 2.5 because this will give us a better estimate to the width of the beam and the depth of the beam, okay? So you don't want to take your B over D ratio as 6.0 6 or 5.0. No, this is way too far off, okay? So you want to pick your B over D ratio starting from 1.5 to 2.5, okay? And in most cases, we are going to be using 1.5 and 2.0, okay? This is just an assumed value, guys, okay, guys? So this is going to be the next step. Now, in step six, we are now going to choose B and D value for trial session, okay? So this is going to be the width of the beam and the depth of the beam. So we are going to proportion the beam. Now, guys, you want to select dimensions to the nearest one-inch increment, okay? So you want to take or you want to choose the width of the beam as, let's say, 16 inch. 18 inches, 20 inches. You don't want to pick a value as 16.25, 18.35. No, guys. You want to run this to the nearest one inch increment. Okay? So you are going to pick the width and the depth to the nearest one inch increment. Okay, guys? So the total height of the beam can be conservatively taken to be H is equal to D plus 3H. Now, guys, this 3H, this is what we know as the cover, okay? So this is the cover requirement because the height of the beam, of course, is going to be bigger than the depth of the beam, okay? Because the depth of the beam, this is the distance from the top of the beam to the reinforcement bar, okay? So the height of the beam is obviously going to be bigger than the depth of the beam, okay? So it is going to be bigger than the depth of the beam with 3 inch because this 3 inch is for cover requirements, okay? So this is going to be the step six. Now, step seven, we are going to select dimension and we are going to compute required amount of tensile reinforcement. So we are now going to compute the required area of steel, okay? So the formula is row design multiplied by B multiplied by D. So B is the width of the beam, while D is the depth of the beam. So we are going to compute the required area of steel, okay? So this is going to be step seven. Now in step eight, we are now going to select reinforcement. So we are going to choose a reinforcement pattern that meets minimum beam requirements. Now guys, Keep the pattern as close to the area of steel required as possible, okay? So, guys, in the next lesson, I'm going to show you guys a table where you can determine the area of steel, okay? So, I'm going to show you guys the table where you can determine the area of steel. Now, guys, we are going to choose the area of steel as close to... That is, we are going to keep the pattern as close to the area of steel required as possible. Don't worry, guys. I'm going to show you this in the next lesson, okay? So we are basically going to select reinforcement. So this is the reinforcement that is going to be placed inside the beam, okay? 
Now, step nine, which is the last step, we are now going to analyze the trial beam, okay? So we are going to analyze the trial session to verify assertion. Because, guys, from step one to step eight, we basically made an assumption, okay? So we are going to verify this assumption if it is correct or not, okay? So we are not going to analyze the trial session to verify assumption. Now, guys, this needs to meet ACI requirements, okay? So this needs to meet ACI requirements, and we are also going to analyze this trial session in order for the beam to have enough strength to resist the load that is applied on the beam, okay, guys? So, guys, we need to make sure that phi M N, okay? We need to make sure that phi M N is always greater than M U, okay? So, phi M N, which is the design factor resistance is going to be greater than MU, okay? So if VMN is greater than MU, meaning the beam is safe, okay? But if MU is greater than VMN, meaning this beam is not safe. So we need to go back to the previous step. We need to change some values. So we can either change the compressive strength of the concrete, that is FC prime, we can change it, let's say for example, we, we pick 4 KSI, we can increase this to let's say 5 KSI or 6 KSI, or we can increase the depth of the beam. We can also change the tributary area, okay? We can increase the tributary area, or we can also add more reinforcement steel inside the beam. Now guys, you're gonna find out that if you increase the depth of the beam, this is going to affect the strength of the beam, okay? This is going to greatly increase the strength of the beam, okay? So let's say, for example, you, like, during the trial session, you add, like, let's say, 21 inch as the depth of the beam, and this beam is, this beam is not able to resist the load. Now, you are going to increase this from 21 inch to, let's say, 24 inch, now, guys, you're going to find out that if you increase this from 21 inch to 24 inch, this is going to greatly affect the strength of the beam. But if you increase the compressive strength of the concrete, let's say you move from 4 KSI to 5 KSI or 6 KSI, you're going to find out that this is going to affect the strength of the beam very little, okay? So we are always going to try to increase the depth of the beam because this is going to greatly affect or it's going to greatly increase the strength of the beam. But guys, let's say you don't have enough room to increase the strength of the beam. What can you do? You need to try other means. You need to try to uh, try to change other values. Let's say you can increase, you can change the tributary area, okay? If you don't have any space, that is, if you don't have more space to place the beam, you can maybe add more beams, yes? You can add more beams. So this is so this is going to make the beam smaller, okay? So it's going to make each beam get smaller and the demand on each beam is going to reduce, okay? So, but we are always going to try to be economical, okay? So we, we, want, we want a beam to be very, very economical, right? Because we don't want to spend money. Nobody wants to spend money. So we are always going to try to go with the design that is more economical, okay, guys? So these are the steps we are going to take when we want to design a reinforced concrete beam with unknown cross-section using ACI code. 